Okay, so welcome back to your double feature. This is the uh, Dulac Bauer Day, Bauer Dulac Day. Those are my two decks that um, I always keep together. These uh, two artists, as I was mentioning in the first video, uh, are both uh, European artists, but they are both illustrators and they both work with watercolor. And I think that watercolor is a really interesting medium for those of us who do intuitive arts because um, the water is the element for intuition. It's associated with intuition um, and also associated with lots of different kinds of ritual work. And so when you are approaching your intuitive space and you're working with a deck of cards that um, where the artist also worked with watercolor, it can uh, have a different kind of effect on the reading, actually. And I don't know if it does for everybody, but it certainly does for me. So the previous uh, video was about Edmund Dulac. Um, this one is about John Bauer, and I really enjoy working with this deck, especially when I'm working with children or people who are youthful because it has a youthful energy around. It's very much, um, I think about Maurice Sendak's uh, Where the Wild Things Are when I see this deck and when you get a chance to see some of the images in this one. But I'll share some information with you as I'm uh, scrolling through this deck today. All right, so John Bauer is was born in 1882. Uh, he was uh, born in Sweden, and so he is, of course, a Swedish painter and illustrator. Look at this darling thing here. Absolutely darling. This is the one that made me fall in love with the deck. So his focus is mainly on landscape and mythology. So you'll see some mythological creatures in here for sure as we are going through. Here's one of them. This one looks like he's coming out of the water or walking out of the water. And so uh, we think about the landscape of water and we also think about the watercolor images that we mentioned before. Just a um, delightful array of um it just reminds me of children's books, you know, when you were uh, in elementary school and your teacher or your mom or your dad were telling you a story. These cards, to me, tell the story or tell lots of stories like that. Very whimsical, very delightful. So um, Swedish artists, he studied at the Royal Swedish Academy of the Arts at the age of 16. He also traveled to Germany and to Italy, and he painted in the romantic style. So romanticism, which was a style that developed around the 1800s. The emphasis in romanticism is on emotions. Um, you'll see literature, you'll see nature, you'll see some medieval references there. Um, and my understanding is that Romanticism was kind of born out of the Industrial Revolution. It was sort of a response or a reaction to what was happening at that time. So John Bauer's work also is influenced by the Italian Renaissance. So you'll see some of that there. Here's that princess. It's like a princess coming out of a, a castle in the snow. Just absolutely beautiful images. <laughs> so also, in addition to, you know, studying um, abroad and being in some different cultures and being influenced by other, other cultures, he was also interested in uh, a group called the Sani. And this was new to me, so I hope I'm saying it right. If I'm not, somebody can surely correct me and I won't feel bad about it. Um, but my understanding is that these are sort of the um, some indigenous people of the region and um, uh, finno urgic language. So this is their language base for those of you who are interested in different cultures. Um, these folks were fishers. They were uh, did fishing. They were also fur trappers, sheep herders also semi-nomadic, and so um, you may also see that influence there as well. 
in in the uh, images. So also a part of, um, so when we talk about nature, um, being a part of that romantic style and, and also the nature of the um, region where the individual, where the artist was creating was also something of interest to him. So you will see landscapes associated with Swedish, cult Swedish culture and of course we saw the snow. And some of these landscapes will be familiar to those who are from that region. Some of these images are also based on Swedish folklore. And there's a couple of them in there that I had read about. Um, I don't think we've passed them yet, but when we get to them, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it. But there's two images in this deck that were, um, that were uh, commercial commercially accepted and um, so I understand grace the walls of many nurseries in Europe and I think we'll, when we get to it I'll show you I think it's actually the might even be the magician card but you'll see why um, and it's just because people loved his images so much you know and the childlike nature to it. I mean, it just sort of fits. I don't think we've quite gotten to it. Look at this guy. That's a, a gnome or a troll under the bridge. So even if you didn't grow up with these stories, it still evokes that same feeling of bedtime stories for me. That's what it feels like. And so, um, again, as a, when you're reading cards for people and you're reading them intuitively, that ties into it because if you can reach to your own inner child, it can help other people do the same. It gives them permission to do the same. Um, and it provides a little bit different reading than, you know, sometimes some of the more, um, harsher images or some of the images that are kind of straightforward like if you go to if you go to a rider weight deck you know you get you get what you get i always call that the truth teller deck right away it just it is what it is but when you get into i'm going to say interpreted decks where the decks um that were the the uh, symbols or the traditional tarot symbols are then interpreted by an artist then reading the card is just not the same you know and sometimes it just does not read the same at all and so for me I just read the image when it comes to that look at that Jeez, he's heavy heavy laden So like this is the this is actually the ten, the two of swords, which traditionally is about decision making, having to make a decision. Um, but in this image, we've got this this kid fighting off this huge humongous snake. If there ever is a time to make a decision, I guess it would be then, right? But still, you know, a very different interpretation of the card. So how you may read that is is up to you. It's up to you actually okay this is one of the images that they talked about that was very um that you know made that had commercial appeal so they were probably in prints and and hanging up in walls of nurseries and this one was one of them with the moose with the child um laying underneath it kind of protected image and then there's another one as well which I will point out when we get to it. So throughout this deck, you see this theme with this little princess and, and it's almost like you see her as a little baby and then you see her growing up and then you see her um, maturing in the deck. 
It's very European. Um, I think this is associated with the epiphany, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Love that one. And then throughout, you also get this, again, the, um, the images of nature. So you have the bear facing the, the little princess, and she's kind of petting his nose. And there's, there's a little, a little, a little bitty something. <laughs> So to me, this really puts this deck really puts me in a, um, in a what a compassionate space. That's what I feel, you know. It kind of brings out the mother in me a lot when I look at it. Love this one as well. Now there's a knight in shining armor, if ever I've seen one. Look at that horse. That horse is serious. He's strong. He's coming through. No doubt about it. You get these images also of the giants. These little spirited people show up in the background. There's the other image that they said was very uh, sought after commercially. It had the commercial appeal to it. It's the old woman talking to the young prince there. <laughs> You can only imagine what he's thinking. Oh, my God. <laughs> this one, too, I like. This the old woman, and she's looking down from the stone, and this little boy is here, and he's looking up at her like, what in the world? You can only imagine what she has to share, and then that's where the intu intuition comes in. So, um I think that these cards would definitely speak to you. I think that you will thoroughly enjoy them. Um, I have enjoyed working with them as well. I have even taken these two decks, the Bower deck and the Dulac deck, and mixed them together and read them as well. Because, like I said, when I first um, discovered both of them, I discovered them at the same time. And from there, I just, you know, they, they're always together, like twins. They all go together. All right. So I hope that you enjoy this art of the deck. I am glad to be able to bring other new um, decks or not new decks, but bring artists to the table of the tarot conversation, um, because to me, uh, they are the core of a reading. Um, yeah, we do know about the symbolism and we do know about the traditional meanings of the tarot cards, but it is the images sometimes that will really um, enhance a reading or individualize a reading for someone. So I appreciate the art and I appreciate the artist. Um, I'm always astounded by those who are work, new artists that are working on decks themselves. It is a huge undertaking to create 78 little paintings with very specific parameters around them. Um, and so my hat's off to all of you all out there who are on this journey to create your own deck or interpret your own deck of tarot. We really appreciate that. As always, I hope you have a great day and I hope you're having a wonderful life.